It's usually subject. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes, it's, it's usually su subject to a number of quality control checks. So if components are marked out and measured wrongly before being cut out, then there's no chance there's that for them fitting together when they are assembled. So when we are doing the marking out of tools, uh, when we are, we, are, we, are, we are doing the marking out of, of substances or materials, for example, I gave a good example of being in a workshop and you are making, uh, you want to make a meter box. These are some of the electrical substances that we use. You are, you are making out uh, uh, or you are doing a, a steel pipe wiring. You're, you're doing a steel conduit wiring, not pipe. You're, do, you're doing a steel conduit wiring. And uh, you need to cut out these things. Remember, a steel conduit is a metal. And it, uh, don't operate it the, the same way we operate the normal metals, the, the normal PVCs, the normal conduits. So when we are using them, we need to mark out. Because the moment you miss out the mark, the moment you mark them wrongly, the moment you, you don't take the exact measurements as they want, then you can note you will do the, you you will keep on doing this again and again and again when you are in the workshop and the the certificate guys normally do the practical exams of these things so when you are in the workshop you, you need to get exact measurement so that is why we are learning about marking out and measuring so always take marking out measurements from the datum i remember telling you that a datum is a surface a datum is a, 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 an edge, normally an edge that is already pre-measured, an edge that was already measured that before, uh, uh, it is a standard surface. Now, like for example, you can look at uh, the datum edges. Look, look at where I'm pointing. The red uh, pointer is pointing. That, this is an example of a datum. It can be a, a face, it can be a table. It can be a steel table. It can be a, wood, a wooden table. Like, for example, what we have in our workshop in, in, in the university, we normally have these tables there that are used as data. Datums normally have uniform shapes, and they, have, uh, they are already pre-measured, meaning before, they, they, before their construction or before they are put up, they are already measured. So a datum is a very important surface or a very important thing in marking out and measuring. So you can see how we can use the datum to mark out. So for example, you can get a datum with a vertical edge and it's a very sharp edge. You can use it to, to, to measure out. Say I'm measuring a, a piece of the first length there. You just measure there, make a mark and cut. That is the work of a datum. They are normally stationary substances or objects or materials or, or uh, objects that are in the workshop that helps the users in marking out. So when we proceed and say, if you if you are using timber, choose the face side carefully before marking it with a small symbol for identification purposes, as shown in the figure. I've already shown you the figure. So then select the face edge that is at right angles to the face side. Take all your measurements from this side and or edge. This is what I mean. If you are using a wooden, take the face side. You can see the face edge. That is the face edge. That is another face edge. Take the measurement and transfer it to the object that you want to cut. That is a reference. A datum is normally a standard reference measurement point. Then we go or we go on and say marking out and measuring tools. Now, there are tools used to mark out and measure measuring that you need to know about. These ones we had already talked about, so it's just a, 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 a reputation of the tools so that you can know them correctly. We have the rules, and we said we have different types of rulers. We have the steel ruler, the, the tape ruler, and the metal rulers. And the metal rulers range from the T-squares, the, the, the tri-squares, and even the straight rulers. Then we have the squares, we have the gauges, we said we have a micrometer gauge, we have the vinyl calipers, we have the, the straight gauges. Uh, we have all those, the vertical gauges and all those to measure the heights. We have the, the ones that measure the mass. We talked about the ones that measure the temperature, which are the thermometers. We talked about gauges that measure the weight. I've said that is the mass, that is the kilograms. We have other gauges that measure 
so many other things that we talked about measuring. We have scribers. Those are other. Those are marking out tools. We said a scriber is used to make a mark. We have punches. We have templates. We have micrometers. We talked about all those. So the rulers, as we said, that there are two basic types of rulers. We have the steel rule and the tape rule, and we have even the plastic rules. It's only that they have not put it put it here. Then both start at zero and have millimeter graduations. So you can now look at them. So today we have a broad description of what we talked of last time. You can see now, we have the name there is a ruler uh, for measuring up to 300 millimeter length, that is 30 centimeters. Remember we said that 10 millimeter is equal to one centimeter. So we, if we have 300 millimeter is normally 30 centimeters. And I told you that when we are doing uh, drawing, especially even in the technical drawing or even in the workshop. And that's why we were learning it when we were drawing in class, is that our measurements are always in millimeters. You will not find a measurement in centimeters. So you have to be very keen on that. What are the advantages of a ruler? They are rigid form, which means it will not bend and flex. They are very straight, and they give you exact measurement and correct dimensions that you need. And what are the advantages? The ends can get worn. So the measurements are not accurate. So after some time, these rulers can get worn. They can get worn means some of the edges can get damaged. And the moment they get damaged, then they, they get affected. So you, you cannot get the accurate measurements. So another one there is a measuring tape. I know every one of you knows how to, to use a measuring tape. There's none of you who does not know how to use a measuring tape. So a measuring tape is used to measure distances. Like the one given here, the longest it is uh, it from it's used for marking measurements up to five meters these ones we, we had even seen it in class and we know how to measure it can be used to measure the height of where you want to install your circuit the length of a pipe the length of a, a, a conduit the length of uh, any other thing even the height of installation and any other thing long uh, advantage is it is long and versatile meaning it is not easily damaged and the disadvantage is it can become twisted and break. That is one of the disadvantages of this steel tape. The moment you bend it too much, it gets it breaks because it's a, a thin sheet metal, and its uh, ends its ends can break off, making them useless. So the moment the ends break off, it becomes useless. That is one of the disadvantages of that type of tool. So we go to another type of tool. There we have. There are a number of. Uh, there are a number of squares. We have the tri square, meter square, engineer square. So we are going to look at those squares. So both tri square and engineer square are used to mark lines at 90 degrees. You will see the, the the pictures down there. They used to mark off at 90 degrees. So a tri square is used on timber and engineer's square is used on metals. Both can be used for marking out plastics. You can also use tri square and engineer square to check that a cut, uh, to check that a cut or edge has been made at right angles to another. Hold the stock part of the square tightly against the edge that you have just cut. So, if you use such light between the two edges, then cut is uh, cut is not a square. Now the the mid the, the mitre square is used for marking out 45 degrees. The, the you can see it here. It is used for marking out 45 degrees. It is down there. You can look at it. Or three 135 degrees. You 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 can. See, the difference is it can be used to mark 145 degrees, meaning 135 degrees, meaning uh, 135 is just uh, uh, subtracting uh, 45 degrees from 180, so you get 135 degrees. So you can either measure the inward or the outer part of it. So the angles on wood or pl plastics. So take care when using any form of square for marking out or checking and ensure that it is being held firmly and tightly against the surface of the edge. And you know this is metallic and it can easily cut your, your fingers, so you have to take a lot of care. So look at how it, uh, the, the tri-square is used, the, 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 the my square, my square is used. 
the way it is placed and the way it can be used to measure the angles. Now we proceed. There are activities there that you guys will just do later. We talked about gauges, and there are some that we don't we didn't talk about. That's why I've even introduced them in this slide. There are three basic types of gauges. We have marking gauges, cutting gauges, and mortise gauge. A marking gauge is used for marking lines parallel to the face edge or sides on wood. A marking gauge is used for marking lines parallel to the surface, to the face edge and side on wood. So it consists of a stalk that slides up and down the stem. You can see the way it slides and it has a knob. And the moment it reaches this edge, this is a stopper, it has a stopper here that does not allow it to move any other side. So that is how it looks like. And it has a knob that is used to adjust. And, and then allowing various measurements to be set. So the gauge, should be set using a steel rule. You can see the way it looks like. It is used to, uh, it uses a steel rule to measure, to give distances. That has a zero end. The spur, that is the sharp point, is pushed into the wood as a gauge is, pu is pushed or pulled along the length of the timber. It is important to hold the stock tightly against the edge of the timber to ensure that you mark a parallel line so you can see if this is your piece of wood that you have inserted there so you can easily mark the parallel line on there on, on that point so the cutting gauge is used for cutting across the grain it is used in the same way as the marking gauge but has a blade in, instead of a spur you can see uh, we are going to see that and then and fibers across the grain now making it easier and neater to cut with a saw a mortise gauge has two pins. One pin is fixed and the other is adjustable. It is used for marking two parallel lines. Now, like for example, you can see there where a mortise and tension joint is to be cut. Now, the process of marking out is exactly the same as with the two other gauges. Now, a scriber. We talked about a scriber last week, and you can see how a scriber looks like. A scriber is just something that is used to mark. It's like a pencil, but it is metallic, but you used to make marks on, on top of a surface. So a scriber is used to scratch the surface of metal and plastics lightly. If you are using a scriber on metal, it is good idea to apply a coat of engineering engineer's glue. This is a spirit-based liquid that is applied to a metal surface where the scriber is dragged across the engineer's blue, it leaves a clean line which can be easily seen. So a scriber is just used to mark off a line on side that. So we go to the next slide. Punches. You remember we talked about the, 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 the punches? And some of them, I showed you the pictures last time. So we have one of the, the, the punches that we, we know is a center punch. A center punch is used to make an indent in the surface where holes are to be drilled in metals. I had said that last time, as shown in figure, that there is a figure there below. So you use it with a hammer to make a, a mark on top of the surface of that metallic surface. They provide a starting point for the drill and stop it skiding over the surface. So when you want to use a drill, before, before you can drill it, to avoid skiding, skiding is like sliding or moving from the point that you want to make that drill. So you use a punch. A punch just uh, hits on the surface and it makes a mark that will enable you to do. So dot punches are used for marking the centers where dividers are to be used. So they are similar to center punches, except that the tips are ground to a 60 degrees rather than 90 degrees point. Templates. A template, this, was, this is a new one we didn't talk about it last week. 
A template is used when a number of identical shapes or patterns need to be marked out. So we can make a template from any thin material, such as plywood or aluminium, that is easy to draw around. So a template is just used uh, for, for, to make patterns. You can make a pattern of what you want to cut out or uh, of how you want to mark out your surface. And then uh, that, that one, uh, like now plywood and aluminum, and then you can cut off the way you want. The next is micrometer. The next is micrometers. We had talked about micrometers and the major micrometer that we have there. We even looked at how we, we read out, how we read out a micrometer instrument used to take very a micrometer is a, spe, a specialized instrument used to take very accurate diameter giving an accurate of 0 0.01 millimeters a reading is taken by adding all the visible whole numbers to the nearest 0 0.5 millimeters so the reading from the thimble, which will be between 0 to 0 0.49 millimeters, is added to the main reading to get the exact measurement. We had said that last week. So although a micrometer provides a very accurate measurement, it can be difficult to learn how to read it. When we go back to, to the university, you will be able to hold this micrometer and read uh, and learn exactly how we can do it practically. Now we are doing the theory part of it, of learning how to use the micrometer. Now, like for example, you can see the readings there. So we will learn how to read the measurements when we go back to the university. Now, before we go to wasting tools, before we go to wasting tools, it is a, a discussion session for about three minutes. So unmute your mic so that we do a discussion before we can go to the wasting tools. Yes, uh, I need people to, to speak out what they have gotten. I start with Sean. Sean. Yes. Can you tell us what uh, we have, the review that we have had today? Uh, about uh, tools, workshop tools. Yes. Majorly the measuring tools. Uh huh. The rules, squares, gauges, mm -hmm. punches, templates, micrometers. Mm -hmm. So have you ever come across these tools anywhere? Yeah, some. Some, and have you used any? Yeah. Yeah, good. So, uh, somebody else who can say something? Mutati. Yes, Mwali. Say something before we proceed. Okay, we have learned about uh, types of uh, rura, uh, steel tape, steel rura. Okay, then how, where they are used. And we have learned about uh, different types of uh, um, work, um, work tools, like uh, center pans. We have learned about uh, micro and uh, how to use it and different types of uh, square rule. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And uh, uh, you will realize that these tools are very important in our workshops. You will not work without these tools. And uh, you guys will find yourself working in the industry very soon you'll be working in the industry and you will be able you will be needed to use these tools 
So they are very important tools in your in the engineering class. And now we will also learn how to take care of them and how to use them carefully. Because sometimes people will just use them without knowing how to use and they cause accidents to themselves or to others. So we learn all these things. So if there is no question on that, uh, or there is a question before we proceed. Okay, if people are okay, let us proceed. Mute your mics now. Good. Now we go to wasting tools. Our, our wasting process is one that produces waste or unusable material by either cutting bits out or cutting bits off. Now, these are the tools used for wasting that you need to know about. Now, what do you mean by wasting? Sometimes you there is a, a you're making out a, a outfit of a, a, a metal plate that you want to to make something, and then you realize that I don't need this part. So there are tools that are used to waste. Waste is just like uh, cutting out a material that you don't think you will lose again. So that those are the wasting tools. So one of them is the saws. You know the saws, and uh, we, we know we have different types of saws. We have the hacksaw. Uh, we have different of them, and we're going to look at them. We have the blades. Now, those are used, um, mute your mics. Those are used to, cu uh, to cut materials that is not needed away from the material which is. Now, so blades have alternative teeth bent out or set in position in opposite directions. It is so that when they cut, they make a gap called the calf. The calf must be wider than the saw blade so that the blade cannot get stuck. So when using a saw, you should always cut to the west side of the marked line so that you leave a small amount of finishing by either sanding or filing. And we will talk about the types of filing and the types of files that we, we, are, we use. And whatever you are cutting, it is important to keep as many teeth in contact. Now, with the piece being cut as possible, you should choose the correct saw for the type of material you are using. Like, for example, there's the, the table, there's a table that will come that in the next page that will show the most common types of saws used in school workshop. So you can see them there. You can see the types of, of, show, of saws that we have, and you're going to look at how they are being used. So these are the saws that we use. The very first one is called a copying saw. A copying saw cuts calves in wood. It is used to cut a calf in wood and plastics. It has a thin replaceable blade held in a frame with the teeth pointing backwards. The teeth are pointing backwards towards the handle. You can look at it. You can even Google and look at the bigger picture of how the, the blades of that, the coping saw, look like. And then the advantages of this saw is the blades can be rotated easily to cut complex shapes and curves. They can be rotated easily. The blade can be rotated easily to cut complex shapes and curves. The blade can be removed from the frame so that pockets or windows can be cut out. Now, the blade is it, uh, the, the disadvantages is the blade easily is easily broken due to their size. Because they are very thin, you can even look, see the picture because of their thinness, because they are very thin, so they can easily be cut out. And they can easily be broken and then become useless. So another disadvantage is it is difficult to control when marking straight cuts. When you want to mark a straight cut, you will, it is difficult to control the saw. But we, we, we say that it is mainly used for cutting curves. So if you want to straight, cut a straight curve, choose the right saw. 
then the blades can be put in the wrong way round. For people who don't know how to use the blade, they can put it on the wrong way round and, make, and render it useless. The second type of saw is the tenor saw, tenon saw. The tenon saw, the saw is most commonly used for cutting wood in the school workshop. Uh, the length is uh, from 250 to 350 millimeters long. That is between 25 to 35 centimeters long with 12 to 14 teeth or millimeters and can be used to cut all general joints, especially used, specifically used to cut solder for tenon, tenon in tenon and motois joints. Uh, advantages. They are good general the, the, the good general purpose and woodworking. So mostly used for wood and they, they are used for general purpose. It can make a deep cut, a shallow cut, can make all those cuts. So another disadvantage is deep depth of cut is limited to the depth of the blade. So it can only cut to the depth of the blade because you just take it. It cannot go past the end of the blade because you can see that there is a barrier on the, in the very top of it. So you cannot go past the depth of the blade. Another kind of saw is the, the, uh, the, the, the dovetail saw used for small accurate work such as the dovetail joints shorter than a tenon saw. It is shorter than a tenon saw with 20, 20 to 25 millimeter teeth. The advantages are it is fine and accurate. It makes fine and accurate cut. Smaller teeth make it idle, ideal for finer work. The disadvantages are it's only appropriate for fine work, not robust enough for general purpose work. So that is the disadvantage of that. So it cannot do general purpose work. Adjustable hacksaw. This is the common hacksaw that we know. It has a replaceable blade held on frame. The blade can be angled to cut different shapes of it, of the frame, uh, the, or if the frame gets in the way of the piece being cut. So the blade can vary in length from 25 centimeters to 30 centimeters. The teeth face forwards and blade have 14 to 32 teeth and can be used for fine work or rough cutting out. So that is the blade saw. The blade saw is even used in the electrical workshops to cut out uh, either the steel conduits and even the PVC conduits. You can use them in your wiring. So it is a very important blade. Uh, it is a very important saw, sorry. So it can be used to make straight cuts in plastic and metals. Blade can be removed from frame to cut windows or pockets out. Blades can snap or twist easily. So a blade can be put back in the wrong way round. That is another disadvantage of the blade. So basically, those are the types of saws that we have. And you will get them in the workshop one day, one time when you'll be working in the workshop. So those are the planes. And the planes are normally used by the carpenters. Though uh, engineers, uh, electrical engineers also need to know how to use the planes because when you are doing electrical works from the basics you will not uh, you, you at one time or another you will come across the woodwork for example you are working on the construction site you need to when you are creating the the, the the slabs or when you are making joining the wood so that you can create the slabs you need to use this you need to to know the basic woodwork so knowing how to use these tools is very important because it makes you a multi purpose person and you can work at any place and at any time without any restriction. So you can look at the planes. The planes are used to smooth wood flat and to reduce to size. A jack plane is long and heavier than the smoothening plane, which is used for finishing and, the, and the planning and grain because it is easier to handle than a jack plane. So a, a block plane is the smallest plane and it's generally used for removing sharp edges and pulling out the small bevel along the edge. So you can see that diagram. 
the table there gives you the type of plane. So those words you'll read for yourself. So we go to chi cells. This is a very important part. Uh, the chi cells, we have so many of them. You can look at them. So let us read about them. Uh, we have chi cells for metal, chi cells for wood, chi cells for, for any other solid that we can have. So four basic wood chi cells are used in the school workshop. Now the first one is the, the farmer chi cell, the general purpose chi cell, which has a square edge. You can look at it. It has a square edge. The bevel edge chi cell is the next one. You can see the picture. It has a bevel label, bevel blade that allows it to get into corners and is especially useful for cutting the, the devil tails. And then the motoist chi cells, they have much deeper blades and are used with a, mal, a mallet for cutting motoist joints. Then the goddess, they have carved blades and are used for carving. The, 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 you can see even the way it is carved. Metal chisel. Now metal chisels, we have cold chisel. This is the one that we normally use in the workshop. Cold chisel used to cut sheet metal either by shearing across it or by chopping down on it vertically. There, they have a hardened and tampered cut, cutting edge while the other end is left soft to absorb. So the impact from the hammer blows. Uh, different profiles are available, allowing access to corners or for producing growth in the workplace. Uh, uh, the abroding tools, abroding tools remove very small particles of waste, such as those produced by filing. Abroding tools include the rasps, which are used on wood and surf, and surf foam. Surf foams are replaceable blades. Now, they are formed and operated a bit like the chisel grater. So you can see all those things there. So the abrading tools are there. We have the rasp, which is used uh, to quickly remove uh, the waste from wood. And then the advantages is can be used like a file to create external curves. And it's also a good on flat edge and surfaces. And then the clogs are easy. That is the, the advantage. The advantage, another sky type of the abrading tool is the star form. They are fast removal of soft materials. They are used to remove soft materials. And then the, uh, the advantage is can be used on flat 3D surfaces. And then the disadvantage is the blades can break easily now we go to files you can look at the files that we have we have several of them you remember last time we talked about files but we didn't list the types of files so you can see how they look like we have the hand file which is the normal file that we have the flat file is there the round file is there you can see it is very circular the half round file, it is halfway round. The square file, you can see the square file. The triangular file, you can see it. And the wording file. So we are going to look at how each file is used and how they are applicable. So we go and do a small reading. Two basic filing processes are used in the workshop. We have cross filing and draw filing. Cross filing removes waste rapidly. Rapidly, it means without any uniformity and uh, uh, without any, uh, any, any uh, without, without taking any sequence, meaning you remove them at, at any, at any point. And then you should use the whole length of the file with a downward force. So the file only cuts forward. File is used for sharpening. The, the most important thing or use of a file is to sharpen edges. So it can be used even in clearing surfaces. Like if a, if a metal surface has some rust, you can use a file to clear off the surface. So a file has so many advantages. So the file only cuts forward. It cannot cut backward. 
So it should be lifted off at the end of the stroke and not dragged back across the work surface. So when you drag it back, you're spoiling the file. So you just need to move it forward. So the moment you move it forward, it is sharpening your surface or removing out the unwanted materials that you don't need from the surface. So the drawing file removes marks in the work left as a result of cross filing. This method gives a much better surface finish and a smoother file should always be used for drawing for draw filing and an even finer finish can be obtained by wrapping a piece of emery cloth and wet and dry paper around the file and repeating the action so the files are made from high carbon steel the main body is hardened and tampered and has rows of teeth so the, the rows are very rough and they are used for rubbing off the edges. The tongue of the file is left soft and fits into the handle. It is soft and it can fit into the handle. If you look at the picture there, you can see the handle. It's normally where the, the, the tongue is there. You can see it is that, that edge that is left soft without any rough part so that it can be fixed into the handle. You can see that. General work is carried out with a file with a flat file. So the general works, the normal works, we use a flat file, and the other files are specific for for certain jobs. One of the long edges has teeth, and the other is plain and is known as the safe edge. The edge, the safe edge, prevents cutting into the face of the square corner. So the file with different profiles are available for a range of applications. There are also other more specific forms of file. So let us now look at now their uses, their, their, their names, advantages, and their disadvantages. Now we have a flat file. We have said it removes waste on large flat surface quickly. It can be used to create external curves. That is a flat file, the normal flat file that we know. And then the advantages is has a safe edge on one side to prevent cutting into edges when filing the corner. And a disadvantage is brittle and easily broken it can be easily broken if dropped so the teeth clog when filing soft materials such as brass and aluminium the round file it creates curves and fillets increases in diameter along the length so can be used on different size ho sized holes small cross section marks in weak and easily broken then we have the another one is the three square file. It cuts into corners less than 90 degrees. Useful between, that's the advantages, is useful between angles of 60 and 90 degrees. And then it cannot file angles smaller than 60 degrees. That is the disadvantage. It is created in a way that it cannot go beyond that. Now we are done with the files. And now we go to drills go to drills and we have different types of drills and before we proceed to drills i want people to un unmute and then we have a, a small discussion again before we can go back to drills so unmute your mics unmute your mics Sean, Simon. Ntati. Yes, Mali. Now, now, we shall unmute. Now, we have mm. talked about files. We have talked about other tools. Now, what have you gotten from what we have learned? Yeah, say something. Okay. Okay, well, we have learned about the source, files, planes, and each. We have learned about each, if, if it's so, types of source and their uses and advantages. And if it's files where they are used, different types of planes. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
en files. Ok. Simon. Simon. Yes. Uh, we have talked about the types of cheeses. Were you in class when I was talking yes. about them? Now, uh, give me a brief summary of the cheese cells that we have talked about. And which one is used for basic, for the basic metal work? Yes? I'm saying we have learned about the types of cheese cells. And I want you to tell me the the chisel, the type yes. of chisel that is that is normally used on metal surfaces. Which one? Chisel. Yes. It's even on the screen there. You can read. Chisel in any metal. Yes. All chisel to metals. Yes. Which one is used for metal? Cold chisel. Good, cold chisel. That's good. Uh, we have also talked about the types of source. Uh, the, the different source, which one is majorly used in our electrical workshop uh, uh, from the types of source that we learned? Sean? You know, I even Pardon. have it on the screen. Yes? Pardon, the scale is very for I, I'm saying uh. from the types, of, the types of source that we have learned and their uses and their advantages, which type so which type of saw is normally used in our electrical workshop? Yes, Sean. Tell on so. Are you sure? Let's say to it's a so that is not to make are you very sure? We talked about an adjustable hacksaw. Have you ever seen that saw in the in your in the electrical workshop when you go up there? Adjustable hacksaw. Yes. As they on a workshop. So which kind of saw have you ever seen in the workshop? He nini coping saw. Your coping saw you cook a workshop quick. Mm. Iko workshop gani ya Zitek? Ah. Are you sure? Yeah, and say you wanna. Oh, okay. Sawa. So, uh, I'll give you these notes, but I'm now gauging how you guys are are uh, understanding my teachings. So, we go to the next thing now. We go to drills. Mute your mics again so that we proceed. We are going to the next thing, which is the drills. The drills. You can see, let me zoom out so that you can see them well. Drills, uh, uh huh. Twist drills, the most common type of drill used in school in school workshops, can create holes in most materials. The t the twist drills, you can see them. They are normally twisted. The edges are twisted, and which is the the most common drill that you'll find in the workshop. There are many other forms of drills, each with its own specific use and application so the most common type types used in school workshops are shown below so the drills we have the twist drill the twist drill for or, or the fluid carrier carriers waste materials away 
it carries waste materials away in the form of a swab. So the small, they, they are of small sizes and can be used in a hand drill. Advantages is they are available from the sizes of 0 0.5 millimeters diameter to an average of 25 millimeter, meaning they are of different, those are the bits now. When you talk about the millimeters, these are the bits, and whatever is shown here is the bits. And when it is combined like now, this one, when, when I remove that metal surface, now like this one, then you get the whole drill. The whole drill means both the handling part and the drilling part. So when this drilling part is just separate, it's called a bit. There are different types of bits. A disadvantage is small drills pro prone to breaking if not correctly used or if not correctly placed. And then we have another type of drill is the flat bit. Uh, used to drill a hole all the way through, but with the but will break through splintering wood on the underside. The advantages is it fast is fast for removal of waste with an electric drill, and the disadvantage is it will split the wood in on underside when drill breaks through if not supported by another piece of wood. So it is it has a very big advan disadvantage. You see, it is making a very fine hole there. And then we have a countersink bit. A countersink bit creates a depression for a head of the countersink screw so that it sits flush with surface on the material. It can be used to create a range of countersink hole size. You can see it, that is the advantage. And the disadvantage is it will chatter if used at too large, too high speed, does not need a very high speed. And then the hole saw, you can see how it looks like, the hole saw for use for making large holes, used on thin materials or to make large holes up to 150 millimeters in diameter. It is used in electric drills. Uh -huh. Advantages of this saw is, it's widely used by plumbers and electricians to make holes on pipes and ductings. It can be used on thick and thin sections of plastic and wood. Advantages, uh, uh, disadvantages are it has a tendency to burn if used at too high speed, does not need a too high speed, so only come in set sizes. So that is a whole saw. You can see it is a metallic blade there, but it's circular for making large holes. So that is the end of that slide. And I want to bring another slide. These metals, now you want to join the metals. So we'll be learning how to join the metals. So it is very important for you guys to click and have these tools at your fingertips. So there are some other tools that we didn't talk about in the other slide. So I want us to talk about them here. Another tool that we normally have in the workshop is the hammer. A hammers are often designed, they are often designed for specific purposes and vary in shape and structure. The term hammer is also used for some devices that are designed to deliver blows. So the hammer is a basic tool of many professions. The usual feature is a handle and a head with most of the weight on the head, that is a hammer. So how do we use a hammer? If we were in a workshop, we would we'd do it practically and know how we use a hammer. Use number one is check the hammer before use and then get a firm grip on the hand. Hold the hammer at the end of the handle, and then hit your surface squarely with the hammer. Use your whole arm and elbow 
that is you you pull out your hand and your elbow so that you can use the hammer and then place your work against the hard surface then work in a natural position check before you swim aha uh -huh. another type of tool is the, a nail set tool used to drive nail heads below the surface now how do we use them grab uh, grab a pair of ear plugs do because it is loud we have a nail set tool now you are your assignment today when i give you this slide of notes you will be able to go uh to 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 and research about how these things appear the 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 the, the ones that we are discussing here you will have their images type them and how they look like and how they are used and then put the pictures there and forward the assignment for me last week i gave the assignments i don't know if it is this class i gave the assignments i think i should put a restriction so that if you, you have not submitted your assignment you don't access the next class but for today that the assignment i want you to do is look at these images these uh, the, these tools take their pictures and then write their uses and paste uh, and save the document either in word or pdf then forward them to the assignment uh-huh another thing is that uh place the nail set over the nail hammer until the nail is sunk and you have enough of the depression in the wood to fill with wood filler now sand down the wood that pushed out so this is a nail set tool nail set tool is basically a tool that is used to draw nails into the wood surface another tool is the cross cut saw a saw that with small teeth that is more teeth per inch for cutting across the grain of wood this is basically used for the grain of wood and then we have another part uh, of wood of of a tool which is called a steel file a steel file is a steel handle tool with a small sharp teeth used for sharpening or shaping how to use it the procedure on the workpiece is the plan the operations and layout lines indicating where the material is to be removed then select a file that is best for the job clean the file chalk oil lard and file clamp uh uh device now for the actual filing we diverge that is following three steps are not to be taken in order now you may indeed only do you may indeed only do one of them for heavy cross filing to remove materials grab now when you want to do heavy filing grab the handle of the file with the dominant hand and place that palm on the other hand of the handle on the other end of the file and then orienting the file so that it points away from you press down firmly and then you'll now rub forward and we said that when using any type of file you rub firmly and forward so that you, you don't spoil that then we have a screwdriver we had already talked about the chisels a screwdriver it is a hand tool for turning or driving screws and sometimes bolts to the machine elements with a, a, a matting drive system how to use it you create a pilot hole you have to create a pilot hole and then place the screw on the driver tip and then hold both the screw and the tip together with the fingers of one hand this one will will show them practically when we are in school then start the screw place the screw on the driver tip and hold both the screw and the tip together with the large finger of of one hand then keep driving that is you turn it clockwise when the screw's thread engages with the hood then move the fingers that were holding the screw in place and the screw will sink we have the architect's rule uh you'll read there what it talks about the chalk line the chalk line is a tool used in building thread trades 
to make the straight line on a vertical surface. We have a level. I'll go to straight to the level. A level, as we said, it's uh, a tool which, uh, with an indicator that establishes a horizontal or vertical line when a bubble is centered in the tube or a liquid. Now, how do we use it? The surface to be level should be straight so that the level will not rock. Places the level, place the level in the risers to the high end. Then when you think that the work, when you think the work is level, then turn the level round to the end. Place the level back to the work in the same position. Check the bubble again. Now you know how the level look like. The, the, the previous uh, the, the previous slide that I, I presented to you last week showed the level, how they look like. And then the level over large areas, place a, a, a leveling over large areas, place a straight edge piece of timber, both edges uh, perfectly straight and parallel along the work. Then use the level in accurate method is a, a then use the level in the center of the straight edge over large distances a string line and a line level may be used a more accurate method in the is the water level it is a clear plastic filled with water and is often used for leveling across corners the square the speed square i'd already talked about it then we have the combined square, the hand drill, the braze and beat. Then the dice stock, the stretch. Up. And then we are done with those tools. So today we have talked about several several types of tools, and we have uh, we have learned how to use them, the procedure, how to take care of them. And we, we, we said that the safety measures of using these tools is make sure that the, you make the correct measurements, make sure you tighten the tools well and you grip the surface well if you need to measure. And if you're using them, use them in the correct way. Today, we have learned how to use them. You can see how to use them. Uh, this screen, this, this slide or this presentation shows you how to use each and every type of tool. So you know how to use the tools correctly so that you don't spoil the tools and don't bring wastage in the workshop. So I want you guys to unmute your mics so that we go back to a discussion. Unmute your mics so that we go back to the discussion. I'm done with the, the, the tools. Sabita. Yes, Mali. We have talked about the files. Yes. We, have, we have talked about how to use these tools, different types of tools in the workshop. We have talked yes. about how to use them, how to handle them properly, how to avoid wastage in the workshop, and how to keep them and uh, to keep them safely and correctly. Now, can I can I have can I hear what you've learned today? Because I've already given you presentation pictures. You've seen the pictures, how they work and how they look like. I want to hear what you've learned today. Joshua. Hello. Yes, can I hear? Okay. Let's start with the... Lianzia na uh, Rura. Yes. We started uh, yes. with the Ruras. Yes. Then then to kind of uh, so Genjis. Yeah. Then to kind of uh, planes. Yeah. Then to kind of uh, Jesus. Mm hmm to cut up up to kind of size yeah then to normalize and size as signs they need to make some then in rulers we say we have a stay ruler mm -hmm. uh, 
a state time. Yeah. Then tuka tuka tukasema how they are used. And then we talked about how we use the 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 tape. Yes. How, how how do we use a tape in an electrical workshop? Tape. Yeah. Uh, explain the the process. Yes, explain the process. That is what I've been explaining. Well, you must repeat those more so that you can get the the process well. So meaning you didn't get the process. I get, but you know, my name is more rude. You are going too fast. I'm going too fast. Are you sure? Yes, my name. Let me get from Simon. 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 Yes, 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 Malib. You you seem like you have network problems today. Yeah, it channel channel net is a good thing. So I'm asking a question about uh, drill. I'm asking a question about drills. Yes. Uh, we talked about different types of drills. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. Tell me the the types of drills that 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 we have. Yes. 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 The types of drills. Yeah. That we have. Yes. Twist drill. Uh huh. Twist. Then the flat bit. Yeah. That bit. Yeah. Hey, people are not the counter sink bit. Yeah. Yes. So you've you've understood how the drills are used. Counter. Yes. Yes. Francis Caranda. Yes, my Francis. Name. Now tell me something yes. that you've learned today. Sure, me say. You will come and happy. Bando salafu nini iko inataka kuingia. Sasa nimeenda kununua bando sikurudi imekataa. Ime take more than 30 minutes kuingia. Ulienda kwa duka kununua bundles. Eh secret do. <laughs> so umerudi. Can I uh, can, can okay you you got what you are talking about today, si ndio? Ah, mimi niliachia. Niliachia ukirudia zile zile za nini za last time. Oh, so what we've learned today, you've not been there. Yes. Okay. We have talked about files. We have talked about different types of files, different types of drills. We have talked about uh, different types of source. We said we have different types, like we have a hacksaw. In an electrical workshop, we use a hacksaw. We use a drill, uh, the, 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 the files that we use. The files is used to 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 remove the surfaces that is from front you you file on the front direction you remember us talking about that you were not there i was not there now francis we i'll i'll, I'll paste the the notes here did you even get the notes that i had yes yes for last time we, i got them for last time you got them yes have you made a summary of the notes? Not yet. Eh? Jamal is a bad one. Kwanini? 
Yeah, you see the problem. Rest is in mingi. So that in a bit of sacrifice they go yako. But but by by now I'm taking my Maliza. Ati nini ni mingi? Ni tamaliza leo. Hey, me pele ka wapi Sean? Francis. Yes. I need you guys to ask any question from what you have learned today. So, what are your assignments in Ghana? Yo, assignment. The assignment that I've given today. You see the slide. The slide that is on on the screen right now. Yes, Simna Yana. Uh, uh, so in the in the the different types of types of tools, how we use yeah, them. Yeah. Yes. So I will need you to 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 go and look for the pictures and attach the pictures to the to to the tools that I've given and how they are used and explain the way I had, I had put it on the other slide. I explain how they are used and the procedure of their use and how they look like and the advantages. Is that okay? Alafu mwalimu. Yeah. Tu hiyo assignment tunatuma kwa email yako. Ah, assignment you just post on the portal. Ah, sir. Ti mnajua vile mnaweza post? Mhm. Sia tu. Nani huyu amesema mhm? Ali missing you. Okay, what I'll do I'll I'll create a, a, a an assignment for you. Nikisha create assignment, I post it there so that wakati muna respond, you can attach your responses there. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, when you mkingia kwa portal, when you access the portal, munaona hapo vitu zenye nime post. You can see the attendance, you can see the the introduction, you can see the notes. Everything is normally there. So you can see them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Inamaanisha ulikuja late. Nilikuja late nikapata umenifungia alafu ukanitik absent sana ilikuwa been for 10 minutes pekee. Sasa sinyinyi mlivu sinyinyi mlikawia kukuja. Alafu alafu sio na shida yangu ni shida yako ni ya network. Kisha mimi niko ushago. Nani tena ako ushago apart from Simon? Mimi mwalimu. Eh, 